my talk today is about carbon ion therapy. Unfortunately, there is no carbon facility in UK, but in Japan there is uh, uh, there is 15 vertical facility now in Japan, and five of them are using carbon ion, a bit heavier than proton beam. They have carbon has a uh, very promising uh, characters like uh, much sharper uh, dose distribution when compared to the protons and much uh, stronger uh, biological effects when compared to the proton or x-rays. It is very attractive, but it cost 150 million US dollars in Japan. It, 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 it is almost a double of the proton beam, so it is very difficult to install the facility anywhere, anywhere in Japan. In, in the world now, and but we're uh, it's a very good characteristics I mentioned uh, to biology and uh, physical dose distribution it's much better so uh, it can deduce the overall treatment time for example prostate cancer usually using the forty fractions over eight weeks for the patient treatment but with carbon beam we could reduce the overall treatment time 12 fraction over three weeks. It is quite short. So we could treat almost three times more patients with one facility. It is quite effective uh, for the, uh, uh, running the facility. It is quite advantageous when compared to the proton beam. So I think uh, my talk today my talk today is about such a uh, effectiveness of the, uh, even with the huge cost, it is still some praise for the uh, carbon beam. In addition to this uh, very short overall treatment time, the carbon can cure very radio resistant tumors like a huge size sarcomas. It is very difficult to treat with the uh, conventional radiotherapy or even with the proton beam. And sometimes the sarcoma can not uh, operate. In such case, in such case, there is no treatment at all, unfortunately, at, the, at this moment. But with carbon, it can cure such a uh, uh, very, very poor, miserable disease. And many young patients are suffering from such a uh, advanced sarcoma. But with the carbon, can could be a last resort of such patients. This is my talk today. We started this kind of treatment about 20 years ago. At that time, we do not know the most proper dose or treatment field, a target setup. And we carry out those escalation study and also uh, develop the uh, technique for the most appropriate to use the carbon beam. So we carry out such a dose escalation study. We experience severe side effects at the very beginning because we escalated dose five uh, percent every step, and then the very severe side effect occurred finally. So we stop the dose escalation and to find out the most appropriate dose. We carry out such a study, almost uh, 50 or 60 such study, because it depends on the tumor size and disease. So we need uh, many, many such dose escalation studies. After that, we overcome such a severe side effect and we found most appropriate indication of that disease. Uh, carbon is most uh, effective, we found. Some patients cannot cure even with the carbon beam. In such case, we considered much uh, heavier particle, but it causes a severe uh, normal uh, tissue or complication expected. So we set the proper target. Uh, tumorous is so heterogeneous, some part responding very well with carbon, but very tiny, small part 
show the very re uh, resistant nature to the carbon. If we could identify such a target, we give precisely the bit heavier particle to destroy the sanctuary of the tumor. But that is our next step. X-ray can cure many cancer patients, proton two, and carbon is also is a little bit different from X-ray or protons. Uh, we carbon could cure uh, radio-resistant or proton-resistant tumors, but the number of the patients may, may not so many. So, but there's some phrase for carbon. It's phrase very significant roles. Uh, best mix, cancer treatment is the best mix. Many parts can cure X-ray, and some part proton, and some part with carbon. So this is the, my conclusion. Carbon can survive, can survive in the cancer treatment.